Okay, so the third uh, major element of network visualization that I want to address before we begin diving into the network lab is layout. And there's two major kinds of layout um, with lots of variation in between. So the first layout is a hierarchical layout. And the most classic example of that is a family tree. So in the um, handout that I have that goes along with this module, we have the Medici family tree, and we can see uh, old Bruno at the top and then his descendants going down, right? Um, the, the other kind of layout is called a Springer energy layout. And the reason why it's called a Springer energy layout is the way that distance is calculated in the network, it sort of, it has a metaphor of energy or springiness. So something that's close together has a lot more energy between it and someone that's farther apart has less. The algorithm is trying to represent distance in some way and in a situation where there isn't necessarily a clear hierarchical structure. So my example here is the Florentine marriage alliances. We may have more central actors, like everyone's trying to marry into the Medici's to get influence in Renaissance Italy, but there isn't a clear rank order relationship between these families. So we use a spring layout because it's a more natural um, representation of the phenomenon. So finally, uh, before we dive into the lab, is I just want to talk a little bit about data structures associated with networks. So there's two major data structures that um, you'll see referred to when you're trying to get your network into um, R or some other kind of network visualization tool. One of them is called an adjacency net, uh, matrix. Since networks come out of graph theory, graph theory is built on matrices. An adjacency matrix basically shows how adjacent one node is to another through a value. I have a simple representation of zeros and ones here. The advantage of the matrix is it allows us to do mathematical manipulations directly to the network, and so we can transform the network. And actually, when we transform the network, when we're visualizing it, like for instance, calculating centrality or some other feature that we think is important, what the computer is doing is is calculating it as a matrix. The disadvantage of the matrix is that it's not always necessarily human intuitive when you're collecting data. And second of all, matrices are, um, they're expensive data structures. There's lots of information that it's capturing that it doesn't really need to capture. In essence, we have a lot of zeros that we don't need. So there's a more efficient, human-friendly data representation that we often enter into the computer and then the computer turns it into a matrix for us to do these manipulations and calculations. And that's called an edge list. And an edge list has three major components. It has a sender who's initiating a tie, it has a target who's receiving that tie, and it has a weight, which is just basically the strength of that tie. And so I have um, in the handout a representation of the same network using an adjacency matrix representation and a edge list representation to indicate how the two um, basically fit together. So you have some data you want to represent it as a network. You haven't done this very often. You might be on a Mac or a PC. What do you do? My, my, my recommendation, at least initially, is to use R because it works on both um, computers. And there's three major packages where, um, that support network analysis that are very, very good. One of them is called iGraph. That's the one we're going to be working with today. Another one's called StatNet. And another one is uh, called SNA. And we can down, you can download any of those packages uh, using the standard installer in R. We're going to talk about iGraph, but all the major components we talked about, nodes, edges, and layouts, are things that all three packages require you to specify. And I'm going to be talking about that in detail as we walk through the lab.